As a preface to the following essay, I want to point out that conservatives act as though they have sole proprietary rights to moral outrage, and this I vehemently reject. We cannot and must not cede to them this ground. They are the ones promoting stochastic human sacrifice in an orgy of cruelty, violence, and murder. The day it stops is the day we say no. In the closing days of Pride Month, I want to suggest a form of protest against churches who give succor to child molesters. Stand outside dioceses with pictures of priests convicted of child molestation. Make it a queers and trans against infamy, or drag queens against child predator priests. Or place age restriction warnings on known child predator church buildings. The most well-known candidates house Catholic, Southern Baptist, and Mormon faiths. Age restrictions are the very minimum we can do to protect children from a culture of child abuse and violence. There are all sorts of options here. We, and I mean everyone, must move against denominations who lend succor and support to child predators for the simple reason that their depravity is growing ever more malignant. Conservative culture is a culture of abuse, and it is founded on a culture of libel and willing delusion that will not only continue to destroy children, their trust in others, their trust in their own faith, but destroy a child's own moral faculty. They are plunging a libelous evil knife into the very heart of family and community. Children who are victim to sexual abuse are prone to animal cruelty, torturing and killing helpless dogs, cats, and other animals, or themselves become agents of vile atrocity, like a virus, perpetuating and spreading this disease to their family and loved ones in acts of domestic violence. And a legion of them are so morally amputated as to go on to mass murder. 60% of mass murderers have a history of child abuse, domestic violence, or animal cruelty. It's very clear that any institution that perpetrates violence against children is perpetrating violence against society as a whole. In the face of these outrages, we must find a way to protect our young and ultimately ourselves from sexual predator sheltering conservatives who have shown neither the will nor competence to purge themselves of their culture of despicable criminal child abuse. It is by their inaction that they demonstrate that they lack the capacity to rid themselves of this affront against civilization and choose instead to deflect outrage upon innocent and vulnerable populations, amplifying their own morally bankrupt behavior. They glorify the most loathsome, corrupt, coarse, and immoral personalities foisting them and their disgusting conduct onto the larger culture. People like Trump, Fuentes, or Walsh, or the peddlers of libel and falsity like Tucker, Shapiro, and Prager. And they expand their infamy by finding new ways to victimize others and to further vandalize our daily lives. They have destroyed the virtue of free expression with their book bans utterly blind to the depravity overflowing in the Bible. And worse, they ask us to follow them and their descent into a world of stochastic human sacrifice. Because they ask parents to find a way to explain and excuse, to apologize for this kind of outrageous behavior, as if it's like in in any way could be cast as a positive, moral, or virtuous story. It's bullshit. 
If violence and sexual content in the Bible is a challenging read for children, the Bible is not appropriate for them. It belongs in the adult section of stores, and the institutions using it as a centerpiece of their activities should be age-restricted. I think it's morally bankrupt to put parents in the position of having to find apologia for this kind of story, or worse, to hand children over to predator priests who are, of course, going to find some way to excuse these kind of stories in the Bible. The slow drip of church child abuse convictions has numbed us to the outrage of institutions that are, by all measures, violent, abusive, psychotic, and sociopathic, and that nurture these traits in their own community. Case in point, figures like Matt Walsh and Nick Fuentes, both products of conservatism. No, bitch. I want to drink it straight from the tap. I want it raw. I don't want to wait a moment. Right when the milk is good, I want to start drinking the milk. Same thing goes with women. I don't want to turn 30 and find some 20-year-old, 29-year-old woman that I have something in common with. And it's Yeah, I got to find, I got to find my 16-year-old wife. Probably when I turn 30. I want a 16-year-old that's untouched, untouched, pristine, untouched, uncorrupted, innocent. That's what we all want. Recently, in the last 30 years or so, we decided that that's way too young to start a family. Why? And uh, because now we... Divorce rates would probably go up and... Once you're that young, you can't really make sure that well, you know. No, all right, pause it. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's divorce rates. Uh, the reason that girls were getting impregnated at young ages throughout history was because girls and women were property. <laughs> they were property. Age-restricting churches with a long history of sheltering child abusers will at least put a stop to their destructive, heinous activities.